Even if you're only a casual math enthusiast, you've probably still at least heard of the highly composite numbers, sometimes lovingly referred to as the antiprimes. They are so called because, by definition, a highly composite number has more factors than any natural number that comes before it. In other words, it's special because of how many numbers it is divisible by, basically the opposite of a prime number. Calling them the antiprimes is a little bit of a misnomer though, because there is a subset of the highly composite numbers called the superior highly composite numbers. The superior HCNs are even more antiprime than just the normal highly composite numbers are. And that's because the definition of an SHCN takes into account the size of the number itself. So while a regular HCN is determined by the number of divisors a positive integer has compared to all of the numbers before it, a superior HCN is determined by comparing the number of divisors a positive integer has to its size. More specifically, a given number n is an element of the superior highly composite numbers if and only if there exists some epsilon greater than zero such that for all other natural numbers, d of n over n to the epsilon is greater than d of k over k to the epsilon. Now, I know that was a mouthful, trust me, I'm the one that just had to read it all, but it's not as bad as it sounds. In fact, once you start to dissect what all these words mean, it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and work through a brief example and then you can see how it works. We'll use the smallest SHCN, the number two. So that means that if two really is an SHCN, then we should be able to find some epsilon greater than zero such that d of two over two to the epsilon will be greater than d of k over k to the epsilon no matter what we use for k. This function here, d, is just the divisor function. All that it does is it counts up how many divisors a number has. So for example, d of 3 is 2, because 3 only has two factors, 1 and 3, whereas d of 12 is 6, as 12 has 6 factors, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. So if we look back at our setup here, d of 2 should be 2, since 2 has exactly two factors, 1 and 2. So now all we gotta do is find an epsilon that guarantees that 2 over 2 to the epsilon is always gonna be greater than d of k over k to the epsilon, no matter what we choose for k. In the case of 2, 1 should work very well for epsilon. The entire left-hand side of the inequality just reduces to 1, and k to the first should also reduce to k. If we multiply k over, we have k is greater than d of k. So essentially, this is saying that for any positive integer, the integer itself is larger than the number of factors said integer has. And since k has the stipulation of being greater than 1 and also not being the number that we're analyzing, in this case 2, we end up with a true statement. So we have indeed confirmed that 2 is a superior highly composite number, which is a little bit weird to say since 2 is also a prime number, but it fits this definition as well, and is considered a superior highly composite. Now if you want to prove that a number is not superior highly composite, that's also fairly straightforward. Let's take the number 7 for example. As a prime number, d of 7 is 2, since it only has two factors, 1 and 7. So if 7 was an SHCN, then much like we did for 2, we should be able to find some epsilon greater than 0 that makes this inequality true, no matter what k is. So if we can choose any k as long as it's greater than 1 and not equal to n, then let's go ahead and choose 5 d of 5 is also 2, and we can start rearranging the inequality a little bit. Divide numbers out, multiply numbers over, take a couple of natural logarithms. And since we stipulated that epsilon has to be greater than 0, that means that we can safely divide by epsilon without needing to worry about flipping the inequality symbol. And so we end up with this. The natural log of 5 is greater than the natural log of 7, which is not true. 
Since we let epsilon just equal anything that we wanted, so long as it was greater than zero, that means that we have just shown that for every single epsilon that you could possibly choose, there is a number k that makes this inequality false, thus proving that 7 is not an SHCN. And that is how the definition works. It's almost like you're just going through and finding the integers with the highest density of factors, if you want to think about it that way. Another way that you could think about it is the SHCNs are just all of the places on the divisor function where its value jumps the fastest. And that's what makes these SHCNs special. Not only do they have more factors than any number that comes before them, but they also have an extremely high number of factors given their relative size. I personally think that SHCNs are a little bit cooler than prime numbers just because, I don't know, they're a lot nicer to play with than a number with only two divisors. Maybe some of my laziness is showing through in that statement, but you know what? I'm okay with that. 